YouTube rules. So we're going to show you how to put your own ends on Cat 5e, Cat 6, whatever it might be, cables you're running to your cameras or other switches, etc. It's real simple to do. Doesn't take that long. It's not rocket science. Just a few little tools makes it super simple. So first you're thinking, well, why do I want to run my own cable? I can just buy some pre-made cables. Well, when you're trying to run stuff in a tight spot where you just want to drill a small hole and not try to pass through the whole connector, and especially when you're trying to run this maybe in some conduit outside to protect it, you really need to put your own ends on it. And then especially if you've seen these that you do get with your different dome cameras and everything else, you'll notice these little weird ethernet connections on them that had these little threaded notches on the side. Well, that's gonna be pretty much a standard connection you find in a lot of outdoor power over ethernet or just regular ethernet cameras. Well, the problem is, you can't put these on with the connector already on it. So you have to cut the wire and put your own little connection, but then a lot of people get scared and don't know how to put their own little connector on these things because yeah, all these little wires are confusing, right? Throw it on, any little connection. Now, of course, you could do this same connection for doing say an indoor patch cable over to a computer etc it's really good knowledge to have and typically we'll throw this bushing on and then we'll throw this on because this rubber seal goes inside here and that kind of gives you your rainproof kind of watertight seal because this little o-ring then goes on the camera and they click together and this snaps in. So just make sure you put this on right first before you do the connection and kind of map things out and look that you're not having to pass this back through because yeah, I have had to do that one time and cut this off and redo it. Well, for the tools you need and the different parts, we're gonna leave all the links down below for you. Now there's a bunch of different variety you can use so you don't have to use exactly what we used. Now, I have been putting on Cat5 jacks or RJ45 jacks for a long time and they did not have pass-through. So, if you're really new to this, I can definitely tell you, get the pass-through ones. They're pretty nice and it definitely makes it so much easier. And some of you old school guys may be saying, ah, I'm not doing that, but well, why are you watching this video, maybe? Hopefully, maybe you'll learn something new just like I did when I started doing pass-through. Now, you're gonna need the pass-through crimper, and now what is pretty cool is on here, if I would turn it the right way, you can see they have the RJ45 wiring. There's T56B and T56A, and I'm not gonna get into the debate of which one to use or which one's better. You can go Google that and read all the articles and all the wars and fights and everything about that. But I just learned the T56B, and so I just have that etched into my brain, and that's just what I use. And really, just whatever you use, just stick with that and use that all the time. Now, this makes it really easy is the stripper and no not that kind of stripper this is the wire stripper and what i did is i did purchase the one for coax and i did you leave a little piece in there as you can see from the previous job but this one does rj45 rg59 6 6q etc and you just pick what you want I, you don't have to get this exact one you can get the one just for cat5 cabling or CAT6, whatever. You may hear me calling that interchangeably. It's gonna be really the same. It's just a different wiring between the CAT5E and the CAT6 and et cetera. And then of course the plugs, they do have to be certified for CAT5E or CAT6 or whatever it might be. Now you really don't need this piece, but 
This thing makes it so much easier, especially when you're trying to figure out, well, do I have a bad wire, a bad connection, etc. This one does test coax, but basically all you do, and we'll show you after we make our patch cable, put this on one end, plug it in, hit the button, it shows you if it works. Definitely save you a lot of time. So what I do first is I'll go ahead and take some dikes or scissors or whatever and I'll cut the cable straight. Now this one you do have to move the little switch from shielded twisted pair or unshielded twisted pair because it really moves the little backstop on the back from coax. Now we won't be doing coax today but if you'd like to see that leave me a comment down below. Maybe we'll do a quick video on how to put coax connections on. Push the button, spring loaded. Pop it in, it goes all the way to the stop, let go, and then simply twist it a few times and pull. And boom, you have your wire and you have all your pairs. Now you'll find there is one little string and if that tends to piss you off like it does me sometimes, you can take your scissors or dikes or whatever and you can cut that little string off of there. That way you don't have to deal with it. Now, if you do strip this longer, that's no big deal because we're doing the pass through. And what I do like to do is I save the outer coating to the cable because it's kind of like your finger saver when you're trying to get these pairs together. Now, since this one has that little handy dandy map and y'all probably don't have it etched in your brain like I do, you can just follow along and just take the pairs apart. And now sometimes the colors may be close depending on your wire and I hope you're not colorblind. And if you do have them twisted, I'll take this down and pull that and, and use it and pinch this and straighten it out we're using this and then we'll do the blue straighten out the blue because it makes it so much easier when the wires are straight and you'll notice they're twisted at different rates well that's the whole thing with this cabling so the pairs don't interfere with each other so you may find some are twisted more than the other that's actually the design of the cable so we'll go ahead and line out our pairs. And I'm going to use T56B. So it goes orange, white, orange. And this may be hard to see, but I will try to move my fat fingers out the way eventually. Orange, white, orange. Green, white, blue. And once you do enough of these, you'll be singing a little song along with it too. So what you're trying to do is just lay them flat and lay them in order. doesn't have to be real perfect. So once you got all your colors kind of lined out is you may want to just pinch them together and work them back and forth because what you're trying to do is get them all together and in a little flat type lineup. And basically what you'll want is put the pin, the little clip facing down and then you'll simply just push it in And again, these are the pass-through. And so they'll just simply pop out the other side. Pretty simple. So let's get a closer look at that. Slide it in. And just gently push it together. And it will pop out the other side real simple. Push it all the way down. That way, because what you're wanting to do is see this little plastic piece here this little indention whenever you do crimp this this is actually going to push into the cable to prevent the cable from being able to be pulled out easily and so you don't want to have it too far back where it this little part gets crimped into the wire without the outer sheathing of the cable and it just won't work that way I've seen way too many cables where they strip these way too long and there's no sheathing inside the actual connector itself. You don't have to force it all the way up in there. I just stuck it in there and it's way past there so you're good to go. And you can imagine the old way 
you didn't have pass through you actually had to judge it how long these were and cut them and then hope they stayed in order and it just kind of added to the process this is pretty cool so on the crimper you'll notice there's a little blade on the back side and then you have a little port on this side simply take it and stick it in like you would be plugging it into a computer push it in you can flip it over and you'll notice there's all your wires ready to be crimped and then there's a blade ready to cut them off and it's literally that simple you just crimp it down and it cuts the wires now sometimes that last wire won't want to come off but usually if you just flick it and it will pop right off and boom you're done pull it out and there you go you have your own homemade done patch cable ethernet cable and then you can get the rewarding thing of being able to install your own cameras in your home and put your own connectors on so we'll get the other one done off camera and then we'll run the little tester on it and see how it works and for the little tester you just pop the bottom off this goes on one end so you may put this outside where you ran the wire to your camera location and then you'll go into your networking closet where you're putting your NVR or switch or whatever it is and this does also test shielded twisted pair if you were doing that since it does have the metal and this you just let it dangle from the other side and then you'll go ahead and plug this guy in the top and after that all you do is push the button and boom you can see we do have all of our pairs correct if you did have shielded the shield light would light up and also if you were doing a crossover cable but you don't see a lot of that anymore you would see the x now if you get one of the red lights which we don't have a red light then well that's an issue so you're looking for the four green good to go and we did remember to put our little watertight connection on our wire here Now this one doesn't match color wise but they pretty much work interchangeably between cameras if you put your little o-ring on there and this will keep out all that nasty humidity and whatever else and keep your ethernet connection good so to do these you just go ahead and plug it in to the camera slide it up and then you do the little twist and then you screw the thing down on the back done boom now you've got pretty much a watertight now you may not put it underwater but it's going to keep all the elements out of it and keep you from having to redo the ethernet connection because it's always going to die especially right at the time when you need it so that's it for this one hope you enjoyed the little tutorial on how to do some wires and you can get rid of those battery powered cameras and get better quality and also cheaper cameras and you can do better integrations with them etc it's just better all around that's all for this one and y'all take care